We're starting out with a whiny dog. Come on. Come here. So Django's going to say hi, and then he's going to be patient. So let's see if we can talk about my TBR without being interrupted again by the puppy. Okay, so every month, this is where we start. I start right here with this TBR creation. I know I called it a game, but it's not really a game. And I, to pick my new authors, what books I'm gonna read, these are the ones that are on my Storygraph account. And they're recommendations that I get from watching other booktubers, from articles that I read, just lots of different places. I put them all in my Storygraph to read pile. And then when it's time to do this, this is where I draw from, from. So I rolled the dice, which this time only came up to three, a one and a two. I almost re-rolled and then I was like, no, I'm going to go with what it says. And so then I go over to the Hey Reader website and I roll and I get a prompt from there. And that's how I pick my thing. So my first prompt was a place in the title. And so then I went over to Storygraph and I just scrolled down until I found Lost and Found in Harlem by Delia Pitts. And so I put that one on there. Harlem is a place. That was in the title. That was the first one. I just go down until I find the first one. My second prompt was under 250 pages. I was actually pretty happy about this. And I just had to go with the information that Storygraph has. And so I scrolled down until I found a book with less than 250 pages and it's Traveling Shoes. And both of these books are detective novels that I found during Blackathon back in February. I got those recommendations from, I'm almost sure that it was bow ties and books but I might have to go back and check again. But I know I got them during Blackathon because somebody did a video of a bunch of mysteries written by black authors. And so that's where I got those. Then my number three prompt was author is a different ethnicity than me. And I picked Finding Langston by Lisa Kleinransom. And those are my three. That was it. I only got those three new ones. And so then we moved to my... NPR challenge. We look at this thing right here. It says then we go to the NPR challenge and we pick six books a month. So if you've been following along, I just finished the states we're in for the 2019 book in this in July. And so all I have left for the states we're in is the 2020 book. And if you are here um, for my July TBR, I think, Anyway, it was a previous video where I went ahead and showed how the NPR thing works and I picked my book for 2020 and it is the Malevolent Volume. It looks scary just from the title, <laughs> just from the cover of the book. So I have no idea what it's about. I don't know anything about it, which is exactly how it is with all of these NPR books. I don't know anything about them. The next category that I'm doing is graphic novels. And so while I do have five of them on here, I do at the bottom, you'll see I have room for extra ones if these go really quickly because a lot of times graphic novels just because of the way they're written are a lot faster read than other books. So what I got for 2013 is Gris Grimley's Frankenstein. I have no idea. It's got Mary Shelley's name on the cover. So I guess it has something to do with her story. Maybe it's a graphic retelling of her Frankenstein. I have no idea. I have read her Frankenstein, but it was years ago. So I remember parts, but not like all of it. Then for 2014, I got The Wrenchies by Feral Dalrymple. I know nothing about this. I know nothing about any of these graphic novels. Graphic novels is something that I'm just brand new to. I've only read a few. Then we've got 2015, I got Fatherland. This one looks almost like it's a historical fiction almost. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see till we get into it, but 2016 is Patsy Walker, AKA Hellcat. <laughs> and I think this is the only one on my list that is like superhero. And to me, graphic novels, comic books have always just been superheroes. And I don't know if that's initially how they started. I don't know the history of graphic novels. So I don't know if they all started out as superhero ones and now they've evolved or what. But anyway, that's the only one on this list. Then in 2017, I have Eartha by Kathy Malkassian, Malkassian, I'm not sure. 
but this one I know nothing about as well. So um, I go into all of those books. I really like to go into all of my books not knowing anything about them, but sometimes it can't be helped. <laughs> I have to know something about some them sometimes. Then we go to my Dark Tower series, and right here is where I have my Dark Tower extended reading list. So I have The Gunslinger, Salem's Lot, The Dark Man, which is a poem, a very short poem, and The Stand, which I read in July. And then I have The Mist, which it's listed as a short story, but when I go on Goodreads, it says it's 230 pages. So that doesn't seem like a short story to me. That's like a novella or even like a novel, depending on how many words. So my plan, which is what I did in July, was I did the poem, The Dark Man, and I did The Stand because it was just a poem. So my plan then was to read The Mist, which I thought was a short story, and then read The Talisman. But now I'm thinking it might be longer than I thought it was. So I don't know that I'm going to finish both of them is what I'm trying to say. But I did get my copy of The Talisman in. I really think this is a pretty copy. I mean, a lot of times Stephen King books are just like whatever to me on the cover. Um, sometimes it's the movie edition. Sometimes it's not. I don't really care. But the sunset on this and the way the colors are also in the words, the talisman, just like they are up here. I really like this. And I know I'm up in the top corner and you can't really see it, but I'm going to put this copy bigger on the screen so you can see it. I... And so I'm excited about that in general just because I'm loving these Stephen King books. Like, who knew that I would like Stephen King? I didn't. Anyway, so that's my Dark Tower series. I'm trying to read one book a month, but sometimes I read two if one of them is really short. Um, by the way, the next book that I'll be reading in September are, is The Eyes of the Dragon which I do not have. The reason some of them are bold and some of them aren't are because the bold ones I have a physical copy of and the ones that aren't bold I don't have yet. So I'm waiting to get those and looking for them at used bookstores because I'm on a ban from buying new books. So The Eyes of the Dragon, I'm on the lookout. That's not until September though, so it's fine. Then the next one is Shelf Space Book of the Month and Shelf Published Book of the Month. So, for the Shelf Space book, they're doing The Dark That Dwells by Matt Digman and Ryan Roddy. And then for the Shelf Published book of the month, they're doing The Rave by J.R. Trass. And I just heard him in an interview on Andrew's channel, Get Right On In. And so, I will link that below. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's his authors versus writers. No. That's the same thing. It's his readers versus writers like series that he does. And this one was live and I loved it. I loved being able to talk and chat with them. It was really cool. Then I decided to add a little extra category in there that I don't usually have. And I just put any Discord book of the month readings because I'm in quite a few bookish discords and a lot of times I'm interested in the book that they're reading just because it's nice to be able to read a book along with a lot of other people and talk about it in the chat and all that kind of stuff. And so I asked around and I was like, are there any other? I checked out a couple of the August ones and I picked the one that the Nerdy Narrative is doing, which is Leslie at the Nerdy Narrative. And they're going to be reading the... Books of Babel is the name of the trilogy right now, but I think the fourth book is coming out in November. So let me see, August, September, October, they're going to read the first, second, and third book, and then the fourth book will come out in November. And so they have, they'll read all four of them. I think that's how they're doing it. It might be coming out in October, but I think it works out where it's coming out in November. So anyway, I decided to join in. I got this book recently when Audible was having a really good sale and I got the whole trilogy. So I will definitely be reading that one. I left a blank here in case something comes up that I want to throw in there. Then we have something new. If you have seen um, Klaus from The Contradictorian, which I know I'm going to have to link a lot of channels down below, but he recently made his own list of the 100 top fantasy books. And apparently there was a list in Time Magazine last year and fantasy readers were like, uh, no. Like, <laughs> the list ended up being like a lot of people who had kind of um, not paid, but like 
urged people to put them on the list, to be on the list as like an advertising kind of thing. And so he is doing a list. And I thought, I'm so new to fantasy and I don't know any of these like game changing fantasy books that, that shaped the genre or whatever. And so I decided that I was just gonna read his list of books. And so I picked the first three books and he did say that the first book that he said was Throne of Glass, which I have a copy of it, but I'm not gonna hold it up here. You'll see a picture. And this is by Sarah J. Mass. And while I don't think that Klaus actually likes Sarah J. Mass's writing, he put this in here because of what it did for the genre. And so he felt like it made a an impact in the way books were written or marketed after that. And so he thought it needed to be on the list. So I'm reading that. Then the next one is the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And I have never read those, even though they're my husband's, like one of his most favorite books. And so we definitely own them. <laughs> but I really liked these that I found on Goodreads, these covers. So they're what I'm putting up here for the picture because the ones that we have here, well, we have multiple copies of them in different formats. <laughs> I mean, different versions of them. And so um, I didn't want to go in there on his bookshelves and mess with any of his stuff. So that's just going to be like it's going to be. But we, um, I, I liked these, so that's what I picked. So I'm going to read The Fellowship of the Ring and The Two Towers for sure. And then you'll notice down here at the bottom, it's under extras, it says "Return The Return of the King. So if I have time in the month of August, I'm going to go ahead and read that. But my goal is to at least read three from Klaus's challenge. And then if you've been here, you know that I am doing two authors. I'm reading all of their catalog, one book per month. So my two authors are Tamora Pierce, Tamara Pierce, and she's she has written a ton of books. All, she started in the mid 90s and she's still writing now. So I'm starting at the beginning and I'm reading the Alana story right now. So this is in the land of Tortal. And so I'm just reading everything I can. And I'm on the second book, which is In the Hand of the Goddess. The other author that I'm reading their catalog is Stephen Graham Jones. And I am, I think I messed up. So over here, I made a list of all of Tamara Pierce's books right here. And I put the publication date and I was wrong. It's not the mid nineties. It was the mid eighties when she started. And I put the date and all that stuff on here so that I would kind of know and read them in order. Over here, it was a lot harder for me to find Stephen Graham Jones's books in order. And so I've just had a really hard time and I found a new list that actually has more of these things on them. And so going all the way back to 2000 is when he published his first book and I don't even have it on this list because I haven't updated it yet from the new list of his that I found, but I'm going to be reading the fast red road and i do know that he has a song a new book or not a new newer book called the faster redder road and i'm already discovering about him that some of his books when i finish i think what did i what did i just read like like i'm so still confused at the end of some of his and i've already read some of the comments about the fast red road and that's i feel like that's going to be the case right right now um for july i read the ones that got away which is a short story collection and like i said some of those stories i thought were really really good and then some of them i was like what did i just read and what just happened like it felt like it went right over the top of my head and i was like i don't know what we're doing so i'm hoping that it's not going to be like that but anyway there are three fantasy trilogies that i just recently purchased that were on sale in different locations either on audible or there was one a book store and i don't know what it's called it's an online bookseller and they were having a huge, everything was half off. So I got quite a few books there. And so there are three different trilogies that I now have completely, I now have the whole trilogy. I own them. And so my plan is each month, I'm gonna read one of those trilogies. So for 
August, I'm going to read the first law trilogy, which is The Blade Itself, Before They Are Hanged, and The Last Argument of Kings. It's by Joe Abercrombie. I've never read any of his stuff. Some people are like, oh, this is really dark. And some people are like, I just thought it was really good. So we'll see what I think about it and how I like it. And then finally, the last thing I've added is, let's go back up here to my thing, one Dresden book. So if you've seen my recent wrap up, I talked about the fact that I got all of, well, I got like books two through nine of the Dresden files. And so I'm going to be reading one of those every month. And I'm starting in August with book number one, Stormfront, which ironically I do not have because the Goodwill that I bought the books from only had books two through nine. So I am going to be purchasing that book this month before I start that um, used, a used copy if I can find it. And that is all. I do have some extras, as you can see at the bottom of this. I have um, graphic novels for the years 2018, 2019, and 2020. If I finish all of these early in the month, I will be going down here to those. I have The Return of the King that we talked about. And then I have my entire list of old authors. And all that means is authors that I have read and I liked their books. And so I wanted to continue going with them. And that are th that's these 83 people right here. And so the bold ones are the ones that I still have to read. And what I do is when I get finished down here with the W's, I just go back up here to the A's and start again and just read whatever their next book is. If they don't have a new book out, I skip over them and I keep going like that. So that is how I work my old authors in. And I said round it out to make 30 books per month, but I was reading 27 to 30 books a month when I was reading 300 page books predominantly. Now I'm reading 500 page books predominantly. And so my books per month has gone down, but my pages have stayed about the same. And so I don't know how many books I'm going to get. And really what it should be is just round it out to finish the month. Like however many I need when I get there. I'm not even going to pick any old authors and put them down here until I get through these because I don't read the old authors until I read all of these. So that is a lot. I know I'm excited about all of them. I love that there's so many different genres and there's things that I have no idea what they're about. And then there's things that I've heard a lot about, like with the Lord of the Rings trilogies, I've seen all the movies. I've seen The Hobbit. I've read The Hobbit. That was years ago. And my husband talked me into it and I read it. And then I was like, yeah, I'm going to pass on The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> but now I'm coming back because of Klaus. So my husband is so happy about it. Also, I am excited to keep going with my Dark Dark Tower series. I'm loving the Stephen King books way more than I expected. And I think that's it. I am, I'm sure that some things will get thrown in. Like in July, I had a couple of extra graphic novels that just got tossed in. And I don't mind tossing those in my, my TBR. I don't feel like that wrecks my TBR because I'm still reading the novels that I wanted to read as well. And so I think that's all. And I hope that you guys will join me in August. If there's anything I'm reading that you're reading, I would like to hear about it. And yeah, I can't believe it's August, but I'm excited about this month. I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.